right, let's let's start with prayer. Lord God, thank you for giving us this opportunity to dig into your word and grow closer to you and to one another through through this time in your word. Send your Holy Spirit that uh, we may grow in our appreciation of, of who you are, what you've done for us, and, and what you have made us. Bless us that we might uh, take to heart and apply the things that we learn and, and live our lives based on them. Uh, be with uh, Jennifer and, and the new baby Aiden. Uh, bless that whole miracle that that process of, of childbirth and and allow um allow them to to care for aiden as as your child um and and be wonderful parents uh be with donna as she goes through chemotherapy and, and give her comfort and peace um if it's your will allow the the medication to work well and and allow her continued health um be with the family of Sherry uh, as they say goodbye. Remind them of your promises and, and point them to the hope of the resurrection. Uh, and thank you for all the wonderful gifts you give us, the, the, the wildlife and the flowers. We ask that you continue to bless those things, that they may be blessings for us. How, how awesome you are that, that you give us, um, you, you give all things for us. Help us to appreciate that and live lives of gratitude. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. Amen. All right. So um, just a little uh, background. You might notice I'm not in the room there. I'm uh, actually in Wisconsin, about half a mile from our Synod headquarters, the Center for Mission and Ministry. I'm doing some training for um, some congregational uh, outreach training seminars that I will be doing. Um, and so it's been two days and one more day coming of sitting in a classroom for a long time. And then they tell me three to four hours of homework in the evening. So this is a nice little break uh, to talk with you guys for a while. I appreciate that. Um, so keep me in your prayers that uh, that God continue to give me sanity and, and help me uh, help me learn this stuff well so that I can be a blessing to those congregations that I counsel. Um, and, you know, think about if, if we want to use this seminar as well, we can uh, um, bring some of those other experts in and, and have them lead us through it too. Uh, some really cool stuff. I'm excited about the, the opportunities that uh, uh, it'll give. The, the whole idea of it is to, to get congregations to think about how they think about things. Um, and it's called Everyone Outreach. So the idea of doing things in a way that um, helps us better fulfill that great commission of making disciples of the people in our area. So that's that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm here uh, and not there right now, but I'll be back tomorrow night. Um, and we'll see you guys all this this weekend uh, as well. So we're we're studying Philippians. Um, this this letter that Paul wrote to that congregation at Philippi, maybe just a little review. Someone give me something you remember about Philippi. Perhaps there, there, there was something happy at last time. Okay, yeah, so that, uh, that theme of his letter is rejoice, right? Uh, rejoice, be happy. There, there's a lot of reason for celebrating. Um, excellent. Yeah, so uh, Philippi, you've got this Roman colony where, and, and this will come up if we get to it. I don't know how far we'll get tonight, but if we get to it, it'll, it'll come up with uh, Paul using the picture of citizenship. Uh, the, the people who were born in Philippi were... Um, they had Roman citizenship, which was a special, special thing uh, made up of a lot of uh, retired Roman military. Uh, this was one of the places that uh, that officers got their their retirement at. They would get a, a piece of land and, and be taken care of. And so kind of like, you know, some some cities you, you may know of that have a very uh, military feel because there's a base nearby. So you're thinking Philippi with, with some of that. And so as we read, um, some of those things might be helpful as, as you get some of the context of it. Uh, anyone remember anything from last week? We got through 
one page. We got through Philippians. Well, we, we read all of one just to review it. And then we got through Philippians 2 verses 1 to 11. Um, someone want to sum up the, the basic message? Maybe even just read your, uh, your summary that we came up with at the end. What was Philippians 2, 1 to 11 about? Or, or just scan it right now and, and uh, give me a quick thought on that. We Listen. should try to be more Christ-like in serving and, being, and in being humble. Okay, wanting to be more Christ-like, serving and being humble. I like that. Melissa? I was going to say the same thing. Okay, she took your answer? All right. Well, uh, great minds think alike, right? That. Uh, uh, my notes. <laughs> What's that? I was looking at my notes. Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that uh, we had that hymn that Paul quoted about uh, Jesus. You know, he said, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Um, even though he was God, he didn't say, hey, I'm demanding you treat me like this. Instead, he humbled himself and made himself nothing. Uh, but then, remember where he, he transitioned that? He said, you know, he, he completely humbled himself and yet God exalted him for that humbling. Jesus got glory um, and, and he was he was lifted up. So now as we roll into um, the second half of, of chapter two, uh, you know, your attitude be the same. Jesus humbled himself. We should humble ourselves. And God exalted him. Uh, therefore, and, you know, that you're going to see that as the first word of our section today. Uh, therefore, you always have to ask, okay, what's the therefore, therefore, or what's the wherefore of the therefore? Why is why did it say therefore? Well, because Jesus is exalted um, here. This is what this is what uh, flows from that. So um, let's go uh, around the room. I the picture in the in the room at church there. I can't quite make everybody out. Uh, who's all there? I see I see Patty. And then, Olivia. I'm sorry, what's Olivia. that? Olivia. Oh, Olivia, how are you? And then, is that Chris? Hi. Is any is anyone hiding around the back? No. no. Okay, all right. So do you guys want to take us around the corner, uh, play or pass, if you want to read? Um, maybe uh, uh, first let's read. So if you guys split up 12 to 18, that first section, uh, just read as much as you want and pass on to the next person. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Okay. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation, and you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too shall be glad and rejoice with me. Okay, thank you. So on that first read through, what jumped out at you? Were there any questions that you say, well, wait a second, that, that, I'm not sure what that means or, or anything that, that really hit you today? Because I don't know if, what it's like for you, but for me, when I read scripture, it seems like there's always something that hits me in a way that it's never hit me before. Mm -hmm. So maybe share, share that and it might hit someone else. So questions or or impact statements? I have something for you, Pastor. Yeah. The, uh, the end of verse 12, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It almost sounds like you're supposed to be afraid. Okay. Yeah, so what, uh, what does it mean to work out your salvation with fear and trembling? Anyone want to anyone wanna tackle that? <laughs> it's 
you remember, you know, like in the commandments, in the ex, Luther's explanation to the commandments, we, we talk about, you know, you shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things, right? You should not misuse the name of the Lord your God. What does this mean? We should fear and love God that we do not use his name to curse. You know, and so it's, it's this idea of fear. When you hear that word fear, I, I think our natural instinct is to say, okay, I'm scared of something. But the the, the biblical concept is more than is more than just being scared of something. Um, how about proverbs? Uh, and you remember a famous proverb that uses that word fear? The fear of the Lord, who knows it is? The beginning of wisdom. Yeah, the beginning of wisdom. Um, and and you read that and you're like, wait a second. We must be looking at something a little bit different here uh, that we're not just I'm being terrified of someone is is wisdom that that doesn't make sense the the, the concept I usually my, my first translation of that that Hebrew word is is wow so that that's where I start with the the word fear that that Hebrew word um, has always has it in the concept of wow this dude is powerful <laughs> Does that make sense? Where it's it's uh, um, okay. I'm looking at I'm looking at whatever it is that I'm fearing, and I'm saying there's power there, and that can go either way, right? If uh, those of you who have been through Bible information class, you heard me t tell the story about Moose, the guy I played football with, that uh, you know six six and and two seventy five, and you know one of the fastest guys on the team, and could lift more weights than anyone I've ever seen, and you know all of this. And when you see him on the football field, you're going to have one of two reactions, right? It's either going to be, uh-oh, or this is awesome, right? And what, what's the difference? You're, he's on your team or he's not on your team. Yeah, is he on my team or am I going up against this guy? Um, <laughs> right, right. And so, <laughs> right. And so that, that, that word is, is, first of all, just I'm standing in awe of god right so uh, uh work out your salvation with fear that realization that this is something that is so huge and so important um and, and and trembling you know if i fear the lord i um i respect him as powerful and so when i realize that my eternity depends on my relationship with him um that's a very serious uh awe inspiring thing um, and so when, when he says, uh, work that out, and really that's the, the first question there. Um, why does he tell the Philippians to work out their salvation with fear and trembling? Uh, how, well, how does that feeling or that, uh, that reaction play into working out our salvation? Or um, you, know, you, you hear that, working out my salvation, does, is that teaching works righteousness? Maybe... Maybe someone someone address that. Is is this saying I have to do enough, and I should be scared if I don't do enough to get to heaven? Well, it could be easily interpreted that way, but it's not saying work for your salvation. It's saying work out. In other words, your salvation you already have. Okay, so that's one part of it. Someone else look at the passage and answer why that's not how we should understand what it's saying. Um, the passage makes very clear that it's not saying what you do merits your salvation. Show me in that passage where it says that. Pastor, can you repeat what he's saying? We can't hear what they're what saying. What said? Okay. You, can you hear me? Okay. We can hear everybody online fine, but we can't hear what's happening in the room. Oh, huh, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so, and, and just for, uh, tech info i can hear the room fine so i don't know what where the situation is but so what he said was uh um it's not works righteousness because um chris say, chris, say again what you said i, I don't want to misquote you it, it's it's not working for your salvation it's it's stating that your salvation is already there Yes. And so working out, not working it. Okay. And then there's something very specific that, that makes that clear in the text. You have always obeyed. 
Okay, so he says, you have always obeyed, um, so you've listened to me, uh, so it has something to do with listening to God, but but Chris, wouldn't that, wouldn't that uh, be works righteousness? You've been good enough at listening to me, so that's how you work out your salvation. I'm walking a really fine line here, and I don't know how to put it in words. I know, I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate here. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm making it difficult. Okay. Because I know you're up for this. Oh, but anyone else well, want to jump in? Look at that passage. Where does it, where does it say Chris is right in saying it's not works righteousness? He's right. Says, so the, next, the next verse talks about Christ doing it through us. Yeah. yeah. It's God who works it. Mm -hmm. uh, he, says, he says, work out your salvation because it's God who works it, uh, who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. What you're doing is not because you're good enough to do it. It's because God ha God empowers you to do this, right? I mean, you think of uh, Ephesians 2. Uh, you, you probably know, you've probably memorized Ephesians 2, 8. You know, it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and that's not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. But then the very next verse says, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So, so who's doing them? Well, well, we are, but God, God's the one who prepared them for us. God's the one who made us to do them. It's his grace. You know, he makes it very clear. It's not a, a works righteousness thing. Um, but that, that's a great uh, observation because you read that and just the, just the words in there, uh, some people could easily take to say, oh, look, you work out your salvation without looking at the context. What does he say that means? Does that, does that answer your question, Chris? Did... It does. It, it actually, <laughs> as we were discussed, I wasn't looking at 13. I was specifically focusing on 12 and not paying attention to 13. Yeah. And it's kind of like you say all the time, put it in context. And yeah. a lot of times in context helps you understand it. But that's, it's one of those that kind of jumped out at me like this could easily be taken out of context. And, right. And, and, I, and I'm glad you said that because it is one that, that it kind of, it shocks you a little bit. So, so maybe think this through. Why? Why phrase it like that? Why, why shock me with wording like that? He, he makes it very clear. I'm not saying works righteousness. It's God who does it. But what, what is this? What is working out my salvation? What does that look like? I mean, I think it's really easy for us to kind of uh, get a really happy, fuzzy Jesus, my buddy, view on things. You know, especially like, you know, yeah, 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 we know sin, we know the law, but we, we all know, we're all here, we know Jesus died for us, right? So, um, and you hear this, especially from, like, people who are kind of on their way out of the church sometimes, where it's like, I, I know what the Bible teaches, I believe it, I don't need to show up to church to keep believing, you know? And that uh, uh, when I read that, what stands out to me is, this came at tremendous cost. You know, this is God Almighty. Can you repeat that? It broke up for me a little bit. That last sure. sentence. It, it came, this came at tremendous cost. And it came, like, this is God Almighty, you know, dying for us, for your sin. Like, our sin didn't just disappear. He paid for it. And so, like, uh, I don't know. It's all about, like, you're going to visit your grandfather, the judge, at the courthouse, and you don't just wear street clothes. You know, like, approach it with some dignity. Recognize the cost of it. You're not doing it because you think you're not going to be respected or you're not going to be treated well or you have to earn it somehow, but you treat it with the dignity it deserves and the price that it pays. Awesome. And I think, that's, I think that's why you should do it with why it says fear and trembling because uh, it's an awesome thing that this grace of salvation has been offered to you and, <laughs> and, and to, to um, turn down so, such great salvation would be, you know, going to hell. So that's why you should always think of it as fear and trembling as well. Yeah, there, there is there is part of that fear that is our first instinct of fear, isn't it? I mean, it's it's yeah. I don't want to I don't want to mess this up. Um, how good is my God that He has given this all to me, and and He says I get to I get to participate. Uh, I, I get to hear his word. I get to, you know, I, I love Peter's point about um, how easy it is to say, oh, I know all that. Um, but, but Paul writing to these Philippians saying, this is amazing stuff, guys. Don't, don't miss this. 
Uh, look, look at what God has done for you. It's God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. That, that's a good thing, right? Uh, and then he goes into some application of that, right? So, so of course you do things without complaining or arguing because, because if you realize how graced you are, right? That, that it's a gift of God's grace. Why would I complain? Um, you know, so someone, someone gives me a, a brand new house and they've paid the whole thing and, and it's beautiful. And, oh, but that closet's a little small. No, that's not the, the thought. It's, it's, uh, wow, look at what he, and, and that's a house. We're talking about eternal mansions. We're talking about heaven. We're talking about, especially when you think of what we deserved. And I think, Adele, your point is big on that one. What did I deserve? And now here, look at what God's given me. Um, so Paul's words here, uh, really, he doesn't use that word rejoice, but I think Ron, you know, summed up the letter that that's kind of the theme of the letter before is rejoice. Um, he, he's, he's given us reason to rejoice. Uh, and, and then he talks about what that, what that leads to. Um, question number two says, in what way do we Christians shine like stars in the universe? Um, you know, he says you, you, uh, do everything without complaining or arguing so that you become blameless, pure children of God without fault in a crooked, you know, so if, if I am living on the truth that I am in this state of wow, because of what God's done for me, I'm going to act in a certain way. And then I, I shine like stars in the universe. What someone unpack that picture. What does that mean? What's he saying that we shine like stars in the universe? The universe is dark and we as Christians shine like lights. Okay. So it's a contrast between the light of the world, what Jesus said, he, you know, he, he was the light of the world and he brought that light into darkness. Yeah. Excellent. Someone else run with that. we got a dark world. And here's the contrast, the light in the darkness. Well, where does it say, um, and we shine like light? Um, um, You're talking about the like light the so shine uh, in, in men. Um, You're talking about the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus says, let your light shine before men so that they may see your good deeds and praise yeah. your Father in heaven. That's it. Yeah, That's yeah. It. yeah, yeah, excellent. Thank you. <laughs> it's teamwork right it's teamwork i i love the i love the the thought there um the jesus said that's what we are remember remember um boy it's been a while since we studied the sermon on the mount but we we did that in one of these wednesday night bible studies and we talked about how uh he he doesn't say i want you to be light and i want you to be salt but he says okay. you are the light and you are the salt uh yeah so how does that how does that impact what we're talking about here we're shining like stars in the universe he says i, I want you to work out your salvation with fear and trembling don't be complaining uh let god make you the blameless pure children of god without fault um i i Think maybe are, you, are you looking for um, uh, 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 as we shine his light, which okay. is what he told us to do? Yeah, the help of him of to share with others. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that as we when we shine as stars in the night is when we share. Yeah. Our information and share the Bible with others, share people. Okay, yeah. Let them that, know about Jesus. Right. You know, because notice what he says. He says, as you hold out the word of life, how am I shining like a star? Well, our Alu said, I'm a light in this dark world, uh, right? I, I am the light of the world. People see my good deeds and praise the Father in heaven. They see what I do, and it makes them want to know what I say. It makes them want to know what why I do it, right? Here's what God has done. Um, and, and that makes me a light, not 
the power of my light, but you know, yeah. like the moon, reflecting yeah. the light of Christ. Yeah. Good. <clears throat> Excellent. Anything else on that shining like stars? We should reflect Jesus Christ in what we say and do. Yeah. Excellent. Because that's where, where we learned what, what to do and, and how yeah. to shine. Yeah, he is the light. And right. so when I do this, that's showing people what Jesus looks like. You know, you, you think of that image. I mean, all these things are, are God knows what he's doing. He's, this, this is all one message, right? I mean, you think about that picture of the body of Christ. Right. When Jesus was here, people could see, oh, that's what God's love looks like. Uh, and, and now he says, that's us, right? We are demonstrating what God looks like, you know, reflecting him. Peter, did you have something on this? <laughs> Well, uh, I've got a great question. One of my Bible says stars in the uh, in the universe, and the one says lights in the world, which is a fairly diff big difference in scope. Yep. Let me uh, pull up my Greek Bible here. Uh, what's the verse? Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. <laughs> Shine among them like star. universe, which you shine as in Cosmo. Yeah, so the Greek version I have here is is in the world. Um, and let me let me look at some other translations. Is anyone looking at another one? Um, So yeah, King James is in the world. NASB is in the world. ESV in the world. So NIV 84 is stars in the sky. And so is the, okay, both NIVs are stars in the sky. Well, NIV 84 is in the universe. NIV 2011, I think, is in the sky. Um, and I'm wondering, I don't have my uh, um, uh, version that has the textual criticism. I just got the computer version on here. Um, so I wonder if there may be another manuscript, because Cosmo is world, and what would be the... There may there may be a couple of manuscripts that uh, that differ, um, but again, you know, it's one of these instances where okay, what there's no doctrinal difference, but uh, so if I'm sh either angle, if I'm shining like a star in the universe or in the sky, um, seeing it, the the people on Earth are seeing it, or if I'm shining like stars in the world, there's you know, same people, so same thing coming out. But uh, um, I will write myself a note to look that up in my Bible that has the, the different manuscript evidence, um, which I don't have in front of me here. So uh, uh, Philippians 2.15, Cosmo, or alternates. All right. So uh, remind me at the beginning of next time, Peter, to give you your answer on that. All right. So anything else on that one? Okay. Uh, number three, it says, how would the Philippians living as children of light be a blessing to Paul? So he says, you hold out the word of life in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I do not run or labor for nothing. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering, so that idea of the drink offering, um, it was... Uh, it, as, as the burnt offering was given, they would, they would pour out uh, a, a glass of wine or they would pour out a, a drink offering at the end of the sacrifice. This is the end of it. And so people often see and hear Paul saying, okay, he's saying this is like the last thing. Uh, I, I'm totally spending myself and I'm going to die soon. And he'll talk about that in a little bit too. Um, so he says, I'm being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith. I'm glad and rejoice with all of you. So you should be glad and rejoice with me. So 
uh, how would the Philippians living as children of light be a blessing to Paul? Because he's the one that went there and taught them okay. about God and about what to do. So you he know, sacrificed for them, right? He, he sacrificed he, for them, so it would make him it would be, a, and, okay, okay. It'd be a blessing to him that they are now, knowing that they are now God's children also, while well, they yeah. were to begin with, but that they are continuing his work. Yeah, if I sacrifice for something, trying to achieve something, and then I don't, Boy, that's disappointing. But if my goal is that you get to know about Jesus and, and you know, Paul gives up everything for it, and then they do know about Jesus and they do live their faith and they do get to go to heaven, Paul's saying, oh, yeah, that, that was worth it. Um, so, so, okay, Paul's saying, all right, give me that. Uh, what else? <laughs> How would their living as children of light be a blessing for Paul? It shows that they paid attention to what he was teaching. Okay. Yeah, they paid attention to what he was teaching. In my in my dad's office, um, he had uh, someone had had painted like over a window, the archway of a window, or maybe it was those sticker things. I don't know. I, I wasn't of an age to pay attention to to how it was up there, but somehow it was written above the window. Um, that passage from from one of John's letters where he says, uh, um, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. So that's John and not Paul, but but they both have a, a, a very similar um, uh, concept here, right? How cool is it that, that they're paying attention uh, because it means good things for them and that, that's all I ever wanted, right? Um, so, yeah, awesome. Uh, verse 17 says, not that I seek the gift, but seek the fruit that abounds for, for your account. So that's what he's saying. He, he, he may not receive the gift after, you know, making the sacrifice that he will be, you know, martyred. But uh, the fruits that abound from from what the work that he's accomplished. Okay. So that appreciation of... Um, fulfilling a purpose, right? I mean, how, how cool is it when it's frustrating when you feel like I'm doing something and it doesn't matter. Um, and, and Paul says, yeah, I'm fine doing that. It's a sacrifice. And, and maybe some of the things I did for the sake of the gospel don't seem to have mattered, but, but boy, when you can give me this gift, uh, what a blessing that, that it matters, that, uh, that you know how important this is, that, that you're growing in your relationship with Jesus. And, you know, I'm, I'm saying these things, and just as I'm saying them, uh, you know, my heart's kind of fluttering a little bit going, okay, it's cool to see a bunch of people caring about Bible study because I know how good this is and how important this is. Um, you know, and, and uh, Paul is just, is just celebrating that. Um, good. Anything else on this section? In the look section up top, I might have skipped that. You know, it, it talks about uh, the, the compliment Paul pays them. Uh, he, he says, you know, um, you listened to me, uh, and not only when I was there, but e even, you know, how much more, how, how much cooler a thing it is that, that uh, you're following this even when I'm not there, um, because it means that you, you understand what a big deal this is. Uh, so Paul gives them that compliment um, that, yeah, this is, this is real for you. Good. Anything else on 12 to 18? All right, let's read the rest of the chapter then, and we can go around the screen, and my screen has the Praetors, and then the Hawkins, and then Dar. So between the three of you, uh, you can play or pass, read as much of that next section as you like. We'll go up through verse 30, so, uh, you know, leave a little for the others, but uh, um, read and then, and then pass it on. So you want 19 through what? Uh, eventually through 30s, but you're splitting it up with the other other two readers. So read a couple okay. of verses and, and hand okay. off. All right, I'll do 19 through, I guess, 20. 
22. Okay, perfect. I hope in the Lord, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I may also be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. For everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has poured himself, has proved himself, because as a son with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. And then Hawkins. Um, I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. And I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. But I think it is necessary to send back to you Epa. Epaphroditus, yeah. Epaphroditus, my brother, fellow worker, and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Okay, so I'll just, you know, on Epaphroditus, it's kind of a, a name out of the blue, right? So Paul is sending this this letter uh, with Timothy, and, and he is going to send along Epaphroditus, which was uh, someone that the Philippian congregation had sent with the gift that they sent to Paul um, to, to help support him while he's in prison. Um, and he stayed there to help Paul. He was designed, you know, as part of the gift to, to uh, you know, when, when you're in prison and under guard, you, you don't have the freedom to go where you need to go and deliver this here and there. And so it was nice to have a guy in town that would be able to help him with all of these things. And, and what a wonderful gift they sent him. But then, uh, as, as you noticed in there, Epaphroditus got sick and word of that got back. And so the Philippians were concerned about their friend. Oh no, he might die. We don't want that to happen. And Paul was concerned about Epaphroditus, but he was also concerned about the Philippians being worried about Epaphroditus. He says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send him back just so you guys can see him, so you can know this is all okay. Um, and, and so that's that's kind of some of the background here. Uh, let's read the last few verses. Dar, your turn. Okay. Indeed, he was ill and almost died, but God had mercy on him and not on him only but also on me to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him so that when you see him again, you may be glad and I may have less anxiety. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor men like him because he almost died in the work for the work of Christ, risking his life to make up for the help you could not give me. Okay. Is that far enough? Yep, yep, that's perfect. Excellent. So what uh, what jumps out of you at this section? Any questions, anything, any insights that, that are new right now for you? Okay. Um, why did why why did Paul say he was anxious? Was he anxious because they were worried about Ephroditus? That's what it sounds like, doesn't it? Where where um you know if if you sent me this guy that was so important to you and you this wonderful gift, you know, like kind of uh uh you know, if I borrow your car, Dar, and yeah. I get in an accident. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry, Dar. I feel so bad. I mean, you were so nice. You gave me the car, and look at what I did. Uh, and I know insurance will pay for it, but still, I mean, this is this is a bad thing. And I, I you know, and and that would tear me up. Yeah. Uh, and so, so Paul said, "Okay, you sent me a Paphroditus. He got sick. He almost died. And I know you're worried about it. And I was, okay. you know, you know. So, um, I, I'm going to send him back so that we can, so that you can give him a hug and and say how awesome <laughs> that God protected you and and we, you know." we can kind of restore some of this uh, uh, that we were anxious about. I won't say worried, but we were anxious about anxious. it. It, okay. it brought some bad feelings and uh, um, I want to do everything possible, you know, cause it's one thing to send, write a letter saying, Oh yeah, he's fine. Um, but here he is. <laughs> I give him a hug, see yeah. him, talk to him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Is that kind of what he meant when he says, spare me sorrow upon sorrow? 
Yeah, I think so. I think I think that all goes together. What did he say? He said, is that what he meant when he said, spare me sorrow upon sorrow? Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, we're still having that, trouble hearing yeah. them. In, in verse 27. That is weird because I'm I'm hearing them fine. Um, I'm trying no, to it's, it, Is everyone else having trouble hearing them? It's off and on. It's like you can hear it, but not loud and clear. Right. Um, it's not real loud. It's okay. very faint. You have to really, you know. <laughs> well, Chris is just doing that to make us pay more attention to him, right? I know he is. <laughs> I can hear him. You can hear him fine? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. Okay. So let, let's go to number four there. Uh, how did Timothy differ from many other associates who had been with Paul in Rome? So that, that first section where he says, I'm, I'm going to send you Timothy. He says, I have no one else like him. What was the difference? Right, Sagan. I said he was a he had a genuine affection for um for his ministry. Okay. Yeah, that genuine affection for his ministry. He was also with Paul, um, wasn't he? I see, wait a minute. My note said he was he was with Paul in Rome. Yep. He so, was like a son to him. He said, Paul said, I mean, he was like a son to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, pulling in uh, the, those pastoral epistles that we just did, where he wrote to Timothy, my son in the Lord. My um, son in the Lord, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any other ways he was different? Was, was Timothy was, a, was Greek. The rest of it, was he Greek? He was Greek, wasn't he? So Timothy was, yeah, he was mixed. He was uh, a Greek father and uh, a Hebrew mother. Um, and remember Lois and Eunice, uh, where Paul, in, in that letter to Timothy, where he talked about how, you know, from infancy, even on the Holy Scripture, you, you learned it from your mother and grandmother. Um, and so, yeah, he, but yet he was a Greek father. He had a Greek father. And Paul circumcised him early on in there, uh, or had him circumcised just to prevent being an, an offense. Um, so, but, but I don't know if I don't know if that's what he's talking about and being different here, right? Uh, he, I, he says, I, uh, I mean, um, he probably had language because uh, Paul could speak many uh, languages, and yeah. that a, a language oh. helped him for him to be able to have, translate to people in the in the Greek culture yeah excellent and, and then you compare it with with the others right you you think of uh again what Paul wrote in second Timothy about about those who deserted him and and did not stick around when the going got tough um you know Paul says everyone else looks out for their own interests not those of Jesus but but you know Timothy has proved himself um, serving with me for the gospel. Uh, so I, I'm going to send him soon, and and, and I want to come too. Um, good, good. How about number five? Why did Paul desire the Philippians to welcome Epaphroditus, even though his time in Rome had been cut short? We kind of talked about this one a little. Someone review it for me. Just to know that he was okay, that he yeah. had gotten better. Yep. Paul wanted the congregation to know that, that he had recovered from his illness, that, that he was okay. Um, and maybe just, just think about this. Why is this in Scripture? Th this piece about, yeah, you know, uh, Timothy's been good. Uh, I appreciate him. Epaphroditus, I was anxious about this whole situation. I felt bad. Um, I want you to see him and, and give him a hug and, and uh, appreciate this. Why, why, why do we have this? You know, all scripture is God breathed and is useful. The Bible says, um, doesn't this kind of just seem like these are, I mean, random notes. He, he, is he explaining any doctrine here? Is he, uh, someone read my mind. Where am I going with this question? Is it that, uh, he's showing fellowship for like once and, and Philemon and all those things that, it brings in the relationship between people and uh, people in the church. Yeah. 
and that we should take care of our workers, our pastors, our teachers, okay. those assigned our vicars, those assigned to us, you know, those that are part of our congregation, that we should take care of each other and that okay. we should care about each other like they do. Yeah. And Paul, Paul, you know, he wrote that letter to um, and Philemon's, uh, like you said, it probably didn't have too much to do, but it was asking a favor of other Christians to help other Christians. And it shows that network of, uh, you know, I'm sending a letter for you. I'm sending a recommendation for you and compassion for other people. Excellent. I love that. Now, now take what, what Darren Gaynell just said and look at the first part of this section that we read and tell me how this goes together. Why, why did he go to this after he just said what he did in 12 to 18? This is one of my favorite things about reading straight through a section of scripture, straight through a book, is, you know, I, I know, or maybe it's just the way my mind works, I know a bunch of different pieces of scripture, but then you say, he goes from this to this. There's something cool there. Why go from this to this? So enjoy this with me. What, uh, why this talk about the Christian love and fellowship and caring for one another? And, and, and yeah, it does bother me when, when my friend is sick. Why, why is that? Uh, how, where does this tie in? That's one of the ways that we do shine like stars. That's yeah. part of that shine. Yep. Part of that is how we feel about each other and how we treat each other. And hopefully as we shine and do that, others will see that and say, I want that. What is it? What is it? You know, I've had people say that. What is it? What What is it that is different, you know, in your congregation? It's It's that fellowship, that family feeling, that shining like stars, that caring about one another. I think at least that's what I think it is. Yeah. And we should be that way. Awesome. And, uh, I think it falls in too with the last commandment Jesus left for the disciples was that. And he said that if you love one another as I have loved you, uh, the love of the Lord God, the first commandment. Uh, and if you uh, love your neighbor as you love yourself, then you fulfill those commandments. So I think that that's, that's very important in uh, the last commandment that Jesus left. Uh, the disciples to spread the gospel and okay. to let us know what we should do is to love one another as he's loved us. Yeah. As you were saying that, I was thinking about another passage where Jesus says, uh, this is how that they will know that you're my disciples when you love one another. Right. Yeah. And, and, and you're so, and this is, this was just one of these connections that your discussion here just put in my head. Uh, we're doing, I'm doing this training for this everyone outreach seminar and and one of the uh we're talking about changing thought processes from uh from something that's that's selfish to something that's that's sharing right and and one of the one of the aspects is taking it from uh, a congregation where everyone is welcome to one where everyone is welcomed and, and so so uh, to what dar was just saying maybe don't make me talk. You guys, you guys fill that in. How, how does that apply to what, what Dar was just saying? That people see that and say, oh, there's something special. Uh, what, what do we want to keep in mind then? I'm reading my mind. We've been, you know. <laughs> open, loving, that we're an open and loving congregation. Okay. Yeah. Fighting and... congregation. Right. And, and not just, not just to the ones that have been here for 10 years that we know really well. Uh, but then, then showing that, that same love and concern for the new people that God blesses us with to get to know and, and bring in. Um, yeah. Awesome. Anything else on that one? We got the application question then. <laughs> Why do those who serve in foreign mission fields deserve our respect, gratitude, prayers, encouragement, and support? They're doing a very hard job. Okay. 
as it's living in a foreign country and trying to minister to what's foreign to them mm -hmm. and trying to live a Christian life in front of them when they're not really sure who you are or what you are, that's a difficult job. Yeah. And they're having to figure out how to survive in that environment. <laughs> Excellent. What else? You can't really understand what I'm saying to you. Spent a year or more in a foreign country. Okay. Yeah. I spent I spent three and a half weeks in Nigeria, and wow, was that a cool experience, right? I mean, I, I got to see things. I got to sit in the chief's house and, and talk to him about how you know when when he went to uh, Georgia Tech um, for for four years, and and his favorite restaurants w w was uh, King Burger, you know, and, and it's just cool experiences, right? But <laughs> But I, I, I was there as like, you know, they took really good care of me. You know, there, there was someone at the seminary whose job was to feed us and, and make sure that everything, you know, happened um, while we were teaching there. And, but that, that was three and a half weeks. Uh, I can imagine after a few more weeks and when, you know, when it's not quite set up like that, when uh, you're the one doing more of the serving. I mean, I felt spoiled. You know, the, the students were there um, tending to the, the garden and, 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 you know, catching the chickens to, to feed us with. Uh, and, and here we are, you know, we're supposed to be the servants and, and they're, they're waiting on us hand and foot almost. Not quite, but you know what I mean? Uh, they were sacrificing for us and um, boy, but being that far separated and uh, the willingness, you know, in, at the hotel here, right next to the uh, um, our synod's headquarters, uh, right now there's a, a family. The the Witties, Some of you might know them. There they were in Florida, but now he's a missionary in Malawi, um, and and they're here. And you just say, "Wow, you know, that, that's just it's a, amazing the willingness to go and and uh, um, live so far away from all of your family and." everything that you had known and it's totally different. Um, but they're like, Hey, it's really cool. We get to share the gospel with people. Um, and, and so we appreciate that. Right. Anything else on that one? Why do they deserve our respect, gratitude, prayers, encouragement, and support? Um, I remember once when uh, we were at solo scripture, Peter's dad came and I think our, our air conditioning or our heater that it was our heater uh furnace had been stolen out of the church and and he was preaching and he was talking about preaching in ukraine where uh if you had to go to the bathroom they had a building if you had to go to the bathroom you had to go up the street down the corner somewhere and he was just telling about all the things that we take for granted uh in our church facility in our buildings that uh people who are in the missionary they have to make they have to carry the gospel and they have to make these adjustments for uh living accommodations as well as feeding a congregation and trying to spread the gospel of christ to people who don't even know them so they do deserve so so much of our thanks and prayers uh yeah. while while they make that effort yeah, and, and maybe someone pick up on, on that last part of what she said, that they are there to share the gospel with people who don't know it. Um, how, how does that play into our appreciation for them? Whose job is that to take the gospel to all nations? It's ours, yes. Ours. It, it, it's ours. And, and think about, they are, they are doing that on my behalf. Um, and so, you know, when, when you hear Paul talking about how excited he was about Timothy and, and Paul, I mean, you've been doing this. Uh, and, and yet, yet uh, that appreciation for this. And I think it's, it's good for us sometimes to just pause and think, what a cool thing that we are part of, of a group where we can, just by putting some money in the plate, uh, we're, or, or give that abiding grace.com or whatever other method, you know, that, that we are, send that they're doing the job for us um 
as part of it. Now, now we all get to do our part here in the contacts we have here, but then, then also praise God that, that there are these people that he has put the heart, uh, the willingness and, and the spirit in to, to go and um, do the extreme on our behalf. Um, awesome. Anything else on, on that point? Then, then you've got 38 seconds to write a one sentence summary of this section. What are the highlights? Uh, what, what are you going to remember when we start next time? This is what this section was about. 38 seconds starting now. Uh, write something down that, that summarizes what we just read. <coughs> And time. Who wants to share? Oh, they told me today I'm not supposed to say that. I should say who will share, um, not who wants to share, because maybe I don't want to, but I will anyway. So who will share? Who will start us off? Ron. Shine like stars and reflect Christ in doing so. I love that. Shine like stars and reflect Christ by doing so. Good. Who else? Do everything without arguing and complaining. Okay, so going right to that application, um, that that's what makes us shine like stars when when we are doing things without the arguing, without the complaining. Because you know, and of course, tied into that is why, right? Because because of what Christ has done for me, I'm working on my salvation in fear and trembling. Awesome. Who else? We get one more. Someone in the room. If I were sitting there in the room, I could. Oh, God, and hold the decisions you have heard. I'm sorry, I was talking over you. Can you say that again? I said, stand in awe of God and hold to the teachings you have heard. Stand in awe of God. I, I like that uh, uh, clarification on the fear and trembling. So stand in awe of God and hold to the teachings you have heard. Uh, good. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. We're out of time, but uh, uh, I appreciate the chance to, to think about Philippians 2 with you, and we'll, we'll pick it up again next week. Let's close with prayer. Lord God, thank you for the opportunity to, to grow with these stars that, that you have put in my life, um, the, the, the people that, that care about you and care about your word and, and protect and provide for your word. Um, bless us as we continue to grow in your word and help us to uh, shine more and more like stars. Uh, as we show love to one another. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen.